Welcome to the Extra Mile podcast for bar exam takers. There are no traffic jams along the extra mile when you're studying for your bar exam. And now your hosts, Jackson Mummy and Megan Saya from Celebration Bar Review. Well, hey, everybody. Welcome to episode 324 of the Extra Mile podcast for bar exam takers. This is Jackson. Glad to be with you on this Labor Day weekend. Hope everyone is doing well. Hope your studies are going well, particularly if you are in the cycle of exams still ahead of us in 2020. And we know that some of you are just starting to gear up for February of 2021, whatever that may be. So we're glad to have all of you with us today. And congratulations to everyone that finished their exams in July of 2020. We're starting to actually get some of those results back in a couple of jurisdictions. So this is definitely an unusual time, certainly unprecedented in my 30 years in the bar exam. So uh, interesting and strange times to be sure. If this is your first time on the podcast with us, welcome. We're glad you're here. We come to you every week about the same time to talk about all things bar exam related. And in just a moment, my co-host, Megan Saya, will join me for a rundown on what's been happening in the bar exam world, uh, the particular updates we've got from California and uh, New York and Illinois. Uh, We've got some information about ExamSoft and what they're going to be doing to get ready for this upcoming set of exams talking a little bit about the Florida exams as well, coming up in the middle of October. So stick around for that information. Now, our podcasts come to you each week in both video and audio format. If you'd like to watch today's episode, you can go to celebrationbarreview.com forward slash 324. That's the episode number. If you prefer to listen to your podcast, you can do that on Apple Podcasts on iHeartRadio, radio.com, Spotify, just about any place that podcasts are syndicated. Make sure you uh, subscribe, however, so you don't miss out on any of the episodes. And before we get into today's uh, recap of what's been going on the past week in the bar exam, I wanted to just invite all of you to a special free training webinar that we're doing weekly now. It's called, Now is the Best Time to Take the Bar Exam, Why You Should Ignore the Crowds and the Fear. We started this webinar back when COVID really uh, hit hard in March of 2020, and we've updated and revised it every week as we've been going along, and it's been a tremendous success. We've had thousands of people go through it. I want to invite you to attend as well. It's coming up uh, this week, and you can register for free. There's a registration button in the show notes, or you can go to celebrationbarreview.com slash now. Now, during this free training webinar, we're going to update you on what's been going on around the country in the bar exams, but more importantly, looking forward to 2021 and what we think is going to happen there. And then to invite you uh, into a strategy that we have seen great success with in preparing for these bar exams, even in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. And then for the last few minutes of each session, I will do a live Q&A to answer any specific questions you've got about your circumstance or your jurisdiction or about the strategy that we're offering. And the whole uh, session is completely free. So make sure you register and then join us uh, for this special free training webinar. Now is the best time to take your bar exam. Well, it's certainly an interesting time to take the bar exam, isn't it? And uh, in our upcoming discussion, Megan and I break down uh, what's been going on and what we think is going to happen over the next couple of weeks as we begin this set of in-person exams on September 9th around the country and then transitioning to some online exams, a lot of online exams in October of 2020. So let's hop into that conversation. Well, hey everybody, welcome. It is Wednesday, September 2nd. Glad to have you all with us. We've got Megan here. Hi, Megan. Hi, how are you? Good, good. It is certainly odd to be in September and still not have bar exams completed, much less all the ones in front of us. I was thinking about it today, Megan. We've got September 9th, September 30th, October 5th, and October 13th still ahead just for this year. Yes. Yeah. It's This is just, you know, I can feel the tension in the air, even though all of your, your wonderful students are spread out all across the country and even in uh, some different countries. And I, I can feel the tension uh, from here. So yeah, definitely like, I think just let's all take a big deep breath and like, it's going to be okay. And we are, yeah. we are here. We are here. You're not alone in this. <laughs> yeah. And I agree with you, Megan. Um, I think there's a a great deal of stress. I think we saw that in a lot of the questions we received this week. 
And so we're going to try and deal with a lot of those. I think this is a week in which there really was very little happening broadly in terms of the bar exam. Things have finally settled into what I think we're going to be doing, uh, certainly subject to change, but it seemed like a quieter week in that respect. So uh, that was good news. So let's go ahead and jump into just some general news and then we'll get to the Q and A, right? Yeah. So first we wanted to talk really briefly about deadlines. I know we mentioned this last week. There's been a lot of changes because ExamSoft, which is what most people are going to be using, has uh, they released the software yesterday on the 1st. And so with that, from your jurisdiction, you probably got an email saying, hey, here's how you download it. And then many jurisdictions were giving information about here's when you need or what you need to do, sometimes when you need to do it to take sort of the, the trial runs. In some jurisdictions, it's mandatory and some it's optional. I just we want to clarify, we are not, that is not part of the bar review. So you are responsible for making sure that you meet any deadlines and software requirements and all that from your jurisdiction. So please, 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 we're just encouraging you. You need to make sure you receive all emails from your state bar, check your spam folder, mark them as important, you know, make sure that those are coming through. Do everything they say, write down these deadlines. You know, I think Jackson, you might've said last week, it's a piece of being a lawyer really is that you, I mean, a huge part of being a lawyer is deadlines, meeting deadlines. The court does not care if you, why you were five minutes late or why you were 24 hours late. If you're late, you're late on filing and that's it. So you need to make sure that you are up on what your state is requiring you to do and you need to do it. We won't be giving you any of that information that's not part of our our business, our job. So, you know, we just want yeah, to and, reiterate that. Yeah. And the three of us were talking about before we went live today that it's, it's a real mess for us mm -hmm. because these rules are not entirely consistent across jurisdictions. Oh, and so yeah, we're definitely. very reluctant to say anything. I mean, we, we received uh, a lot of emails that people forward to us from their jurisdictions, and we appreciate that. It's great for us to be able to see what's being said. Unfortunately, it's not always exactly the same. And so we don't want to mislead anyone by saying, here's the, the procedure in Illinois, and you're in California, and it's something different, even though they're both using ExamSoft. Now, I can tell you that ExamSoft has put together a four or five page announcement about their services for the October 2020 exam. And some jurisdictions apparently are sending that directly in their information packet to applicants. But I, again, I can't tell you that every state is doing that. But you should be looking for some document from ExamSoft that walks you through everything related to your exam as far as they're concerned. And it's got all the hardware uh, technical requirements, it's got the rules, it's got the application, it's got everything I think that you would want to know from ExamSoft. And if your jurisdiction is using that, make sure you check it out. I, in the Illinois package I, I referenced, it was at the very bottom and you might have missed it if you didn't go through all 14 or 15 pages of the, the, the message. So make sure you're watching for those specifically. If you think you should have that and haven't seen it, don't contact us. <laughs> contact the bar examiners and, and or and or ExamSoft and say, I, I think I need this and I didn't see it. That's where you want to be looking. But this is the time, particularly, I mean, now ExamSoft will be in play for the October 5th and 6th uh, Plan B and for October 13th in Florida. So those groups should be looking for that kind of information. If you're in the September 9th, or September 30th exam, I don't think this applies to you in quite the same way, even though ExamSoft might be used to, to upload your essays and performance tests to the bar examiners, but the in-person exam is something very different. So I hope that clears it up a little bit for people. Yeah, great. All right, and we also wanted to point out that if you are someone who is in need of or is interested in reciprocity, that is going to be found on the NCBE's website. So again, that's something that we're going to kind of not be keeping up. It's getting very, very complicated and messy. So on the NCBE website, if you go to their COVID-19 uh, pages, they've got a table that says like, you know, look at it in table format of the state changes. And then at the bottom, if you scroll down, it's got a table with the rest, current reciprocity as it stands. So be sure to be checking that if you are someone who was maybe wasn't able to sit in the state that you want to be admitted into and you're waiting to see if uh, you'll get reciprocity for that. 
Yeah, and it's 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 changing every day, literally. Uh, there, I can tell you that if you're in California, Florida, no reciprocity. Uh, New York is going to have very limited reciprocity. It looks like <clears throat> based on their announcements and decisions. I think it was Texas that had the one-way reciprocity. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, there's some weird, weird stuff. So just be aware of it. But I, th I thought June had a really great comment before we went live today. She said, oh, just pass the bar exam you're taking. You know, take care of that one first, and then you can talk about reciprocity, which, you know, there's a there's a wisdom to fairy godmother-isms. And uh, this was one of them I thought that made sense. Just get through your own. But if you are interested and want to know about reciprocity, again, that's not the same as score portability. This is not a UBE. You cannot transfer your scores. So it's only if there is a reciprocity agreement <clears throat> between the state in which you've taken and passed the exam and another state. So make sure you check that out if you're interested. There'll be plenty of time to figure that out. I guess we won't see results in some of these states really until 2021. So there's going to be plenty of time to think about it. Yeah. All right. Speaking of results, California, this was just kind of an interesting thing. If you're in California, you know, you can keep your eye on it. We're going to be keeping an eye on it. So the state legislature in California issued a non-binding resolution asking the state Supreme Court to make the new cut score retroactive. I believe it's, the thinking was that your score lasts for five years. So they were saying, what's the point then in saying, well, if you got, if you would have gotten it, you know, four years ago, what's the difference yeah. now? If, if that score was good, you know, going back five years, why would it not? Um, count now. So anyway, that's really the first time that we've seen uh, a state legislature weigh in. I'm not, you know, don't, let's not hold our breaths for this, but gosh, it would be, that would be a, such a kind thing. <laughs> for this it would be a wonderful too. thing. And I mean, I, I've had some people say, well, you, you're opposed to reciprocity or you're opposed to the retroactive. Of course not. We're, we're, we'd love it. We'd have a bunch of people that would be members of the bar. The, but we're also realists and the legislature can opine until they're blue in the face, but the California Supreme Court is the one that makes this decision. And this is a, you know, this is a, a question of, of powerful branches of government, co-equal branches of government and, and deciding who's got uh, the greatest uh, strength here. And I, I think, Megan, you, you probably feel this more than I do, but California is a fairly dysfunctional bar. The relationship between the Bar Association, the state Supreme Court, and the legislature is really fraught with tension and has been for a long time. These questions about scores and diversity in the bar and the fairness of the exam are not new ones. They didn't just happen when COVID-19 came along. They've been long-standing, long-simmering problems. And, you know, for all of the, the desire to make the bar more inclusive and the need for it to be more inclusive, the truth is most members of the California bar, or at least a significant number of them, have absolutely no interest in more competition. So it is a protective trade organization. I know you're a member of that organization, so I won't ask you to speak to that. But <laughs> I think I think that it's it's just important to recognize that it's possible that they would be retroactive, but the worst thing, and I heard this from a couple of people this week, were saying, I'm not going to sit for the exam because I'm waiting for the, the retroactive score to come in. Don't do that. That's a that's a big mistake because I, I just don't think you want to hold your career and your breath for something that is still very, very, really kind of tangential. Yeah. It's really important to point out that as of right now, the state Supreme Court has explicitly said the score is not retroactively applied. So so mm -hmm. like the current law is it's not retroactive. So this isn't an open question where they're like, oh, we could we could go either way. We're not sure. There's already been a, an opinion on this. There's already been a ruling on this. Yeah. And so now we need to, you know, the state legislature is saying basically trying to, I think, shame a bit the, the state Supreme Court into changing their minds, which is great. I, I'm all for yeah. it. So, you know, we'll let you know, but yes, certainly do not, not take the California bar in October yeah. that you're registered for, because you are hoping for this retroactivity, you know, trust me, if you sit for the exam in October, and then it turns out that you didn't need to, because you already are going to become a member, you will be fine. You will not be upset about that. You're not going to be like, uh, you yeah. know, slamming your fists on the table. You're going to be like, I'm just happy to be a member. And who cares? You know, yeah. And I, and, and I and October. the legislature has no authority in this area. No, the right. can pass right. As many laws as they want. Governor Newsom could 
issue as many orders as he wants. This yeah. is not like the federal government. <laughs> or <it> is, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, but, no. Um, this is up to the California Supreme yeah. Court and no one else. Yeah, so, exactly. yeah, so it's not binding. Okay. All right. Did, Jackson, did you, I know you mentioned the Illinois rules that came out. Did you want to highlight any of those pieces for Illinois? Well, or yeah, I, I, I just, I think it's interesting only in that Illinois is a plan B October 5th and 6th jurisdiction. They put out a fairly lengthy uh, discussion of what you could do. They talked about the way they're going to handle the online essays and online performance tests. I will say that in their view, You'll be able to do some highlighting, but you won't be able to copy from the questions themselves. I think that'll be pretty uniform because the national conference just isn't going to allow that to happen. I, I think it's just important that people look at these rules and understand if you're in Illinois, certainly you want to look at these rules. Uh, but whatever state you're in, again, as we said, look at your specific rules. One of the things was just, just this is just odd to me. There was a, a an entire section about appropriate attire yeah. for the bar exam, yeah. and it said... You must wear clothes. <laughs> and it, it got me wondering, really? Do they really think people are going to show up naked for the bar exam? I, I, you know, I, if you don't say it. <laughs> I guess. So, yeah. So if you were planning on coming, you know, naked to the exam, you're not going to be able to do that in Illinois. Um, but, you know, naked anywhere, and afraid. Yeah, naked and unafraid. So in any event, so that's the level of specificity that some of these rules are getting down to. Yeah. And I think that's that's probably the most interesting part of, of the rule set. So yeah. there you go. Okay. I think there's probably one other small thing that I've been hearing a lot of students expressing concern about. So again, I, I want to reiterate, this is just Illinois saying this. So, you know, wait till your jurisdiction comes out, but hopefully it eases your mind a bit. Illinois said you'll be flagged for what they call eyes not on the screen for extended okay. periods of time. I know people are kind of panicking and thinking that it means like, if I go, okay, what's that? Oh yeah, yeah. And then start typing again, that that's going to flag. I don't think that's going to flag for, so basically it's like an AI proctor and then they'll flag it and an actual human being will look at it. I think you will be fine. They recognize that you are going to blink. You are going to close your eyes. You're going to just naturally like look around, whatever the, concern is if you spend a significant amount of time looking down in your lap, looking up somewhere, looking, you know, right or left, if you're sitting there and going like this for like, you know, 30 seconds, and then you're writing and then you're looking back and then you're writing, that's the kind of stuff. So yeah. don't panic. They're, I mean, they're human beings. Like people understand that you're not a robot who can like stare directly into your webcam for three hours without blinking. But, you know, but you do need to be aware to not be acting. Don't act weird. Like it's basically like don't act <laughs> odd. Don't weird. Something, you know, but, but don't panic about, oh my gosh, what do I do if I look up or I look to the right or the left? Am I going to be disqualified? Well, I think you just named the episode, Megan. Don't be weird. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think that's exactly right. I think that's really good advice. You know, common sense will prevail. Yes. Uh, it's pretty obvious. You can tell, for example, I, I, sometimes people ask, you know, why, what is it I'm doing when I do this? I have multiple screens <laughs> across my desk. Right. And so I'm actually looking at a range of screens here because I've got different things going on. Now, I've been, I have been told to stop doing so much of that. <laughs> so it's way better than it used to be. You used to see me looking over there because I had all sorts of things going on, you know, like three, four ranges. But <laughs> it's obvious, you know, when you're watching, you can tell when somebody isn't, you know, and they're coming back. And I think Megan's yeah. demonstration is a good example of that. You just can't be doing that stuff. If you're not cheating, you're going to be okay. If you're cheating, I think they're going to catch you. Yeah. Right, exactly. It's like, don't cheat. And then you don't really have to worry about it because you know you're telling the truth. Um, don't and cheat and don't be don't, weird. Right. Don't act guilty. Like if you're not, <laughs> you're not cheating, don't act guilty. But yeah, I mean, that's a good example. You can tell when Jackson is like, when he's thinking and he's like looking over and then he goes, oh, this thing. It's very obvious. Like, oh, he just looked over and he read something. You know, if yeah. somebody's like, oh, what's the cut score in Nevada? And like, oh, you just went over and you looked it up and you and you told us yeah. it's, it's pretty obvious. So it's the same sort of a thing. Yeah. You're fine. Okay. So let's move to some questions that people had kind of about these pandemic related changes or issues. All right. The letter that was received from the Florida Board of Bar Examiners indicated that certain subjects are not going to be tested. 
Um, and then they list some of them. I'm not sure. If, and then saying, I'm not sure if we're being tested on some of these other areas is like, for example, does contracts, uh, is that include sales or not? What are the, the subjects okay. that we don't have to study for? Four? <clears throat> contracts will include sales because the subject generally includes it. So it's UCC article two, and that's not a big deal. There's no, there's, there's nothing really distinguished. Uh, I think about that. I think the big change in, in Florida was that uh, federal civil procedure and jurisdiction is not part of the first day of the Florida exam. So I know there are some people who are taking just part A or day one in February of 2021 that opted out of the 2020. If you're just taking day one, you don't need to do federal jurisdiction and procedure. It's not part of that exam. It's also not part of the October 13th exam, because that is effectively day one of the test. Next question for the Florida day, they said day only, but I assume they're saying day one only. It appears the FBE have removed federal civil procedure. I I imagine, okay. And then said, I imagine this is a permanent change in the, I'm not yet ready. Do you think this is is permanent? They're never going back to it. I I don't think it is permanent. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. That's what they were saying is they were like, correct. This is. Permanent. No, yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I take, but I don't think it is. Well, and here's the thing. They have only said for this exam. So, so yeah. if you're studying for a later exam, please don't take this as this was yeah. for the October 13th exam. Yeah. I, I think one of the things we want to say to our 2021 students is we love you dearly. <laughs> But like everything else, you're going to have to take a back seat here and take a breath and let us see what happens through this range of exams and the results and where the world looks. It's it's nearly impossible for us to answer with any specificity these questions that we're getting. I had somebody write to me today and say, well, what do I do about the New York bar exam in February 2021 as a foreign trained attorney? I don't know the answer yet. I'm not sure anybody does. I think these things are still in too much of a flux to really know and say anything's permanent. So I think to some extent, you wanna just continue your studies as is and continue to work and then recognize that there may be some adjustments or refinements made between now and the exam date that you're taking. It doesn't mean don't do things or stop right now. We certainly don't want you to stop, but we also don't want you to overthink this this many months out. I mean, who could have foreseen this craziness six months ago? Yeah. So, you know, I, I, I'm just not feeling really great about the prognostication business in 2021 yet. <laughs> all right. Do you, on that, that note, do you have any specific suggestions about how, if at all, we should tailor our studies differently in Florida for this last month? Well, I think there are a couple of things you can do. Certainly, uh, as it pertains to multi-state topics, you know, topics like torts, contracts, property, federal con law. I think the multi-state nutshell videos are a great form of review. So I think that's one thing. If you're a photo reader, you've photo read the entire outline. If you're not a photo reader, maybe you go back and you rapidly read that one section of, of a topic. And then you, you watch the lecture that's usually like 10 to 20 minutes in length and then do some, some question practice. One of the things that I really want to caution people about in Florida you will now have the last exam in 2020 as it appears right now. I know that you're all anxious because you were so close to the actual exam date when they pulled the the plug. The problem is you've got to slow it down now. I see way too many people trying to do too much. We are not even 30 days, I mean, we're more than 30 days away from that exam. It is just too early for you guys to be doing full length tests, to be, I I had some people say, "I'm, I'm gonna write three essays a day don't do that. I don't think that's a good plan. You know, take a subject and spend some time with it. You've got the luxury now of some time. Use that time to really dig deep. And ultimately, we talked about this last week, mind maps are absolutely critical to learning the material. And if the examiners end up having to go to open book, which I think is still a possibility in Florida, then you are set for that. So I want to encourage you. I think the the ultimate answer that I would give to the question that you just gave me, Megan, is mind map. Whatever you have to do to mind map, whether it's reading, lecture, question practice, get it reduced to a mind map and use those mind maps and review those mind maps. That's what you should be doing if you're a Florida bar taker. Do you want to add to that? 
No, I, I think that's wonderful. That's exactly, I just, it's not even just Florida for everyone. I think you need to be my, doing mind maps. Like you, yeah. most of you would be through with your substantive studies by now. You're in the review. You need to be writing essays and then mind map those essays when you're done. You need to be doing multiple choice questions and then going through, even if you got them right or wrong, read the answer explanations, add that, add them to your mind map. You know, if it's already in your mind map, great. Reread that section of your mind map. Make sure you understand it. Read your whole mind map out loud and record yourself on your phone and then play it back for yourself. Like do these things. You've The only way that this extra time is helpful for you, I think, is if you're using it to just review and refresh instead of create new tasks for yourself or getting yourself worked up about, well, what if this happens and what if that, you know, like, just try to focus on, hey, it's just a longer period of time for me to feel even more comfortable with the material than I already do. So just use it for that. Okay. All right. Next question is, all you, a friend of mine told me today, all you do is study, study, study. It doesn't look like you're taking the bar exam anytime soon. This is a New York student who can't do the, doesn't qualify. So take a break for a few days. Should I take him up on his advice? Yeah, I think so. I, I think taking some time off, I think when your friends and your family start saying, you know, hey, dude, you know, you're, you're over the top, that's a pretty good warning signal. There's no reason not to take a little bit of time off. Now, that doesn't mean stopping altogether forever. It just means taking some time and resetting the clock, resetting the, the study dial. It, you know, this is a little bit like having visitors that come to your house and they stay too long. You know, it's, you know, it, it, you're going to wear on, it, the test is going to wear on you. You're going to wear on other people. And I think it makes sense to take some time away. Now in that time away, you might start looking at other jurisdictions where you could apply. And I know that this particular student said, I can't get my records from my law school. Well, I, I wouldn't assume that necessarily. Look, people still have to get their records. These schools are still operational and they still have a requirement to the state bars and it's critically important to them to get their people into the bar. So I, I would go ahead and make the effort, find a jurisdiction where you think you could take the exam if New York won't let you, and then make the application and start the process there. Uh, it, because starting now is better than starting later. I just don't think it's going to magically open up and everybody's going to walk into and open the doors one day and say, oh, we're here and, you know, everything is pristine. It just, I don't think it's going to happen that way. So I would start that now and use some of this time that you have away from study to identify some other jurisdictions and start your application process. New York is a problem. I, there's no getting around that in my view. I think they are going to deliberately reduce, uh, they, they have decided, it appears, that they're going to make this a two attempt uh, or, you know, third, three and out. So you get three shots at this thing and you're out. And unless you're, you know, a, and if you're a foreign trained attorney, one shot, maybe, I don't even know. I mean, it, it's, it's weird. So I think everybody that's thinking New York needs to start thinking other UBE jurisdictions and see what happens. Mm -hmm. uh, great. Um, all right. And then we had a question about, you know, if there was any, if we could talk about the latest information from the Georgia bar. So what I want to say is, I know, I think there was like a Facebook post about it. This is kind of what we're talking about with like, we don't want to get so deep in the weeds of this kind of stuff. The new information from the Georgia bar was literally still no score portability, still same exact pass score. I mean, literally it's the past. They, they made an announcement that the pass score was the same. Like it's so with stuff like that, like, you know, I just, it's not that it's not that, I mean, clearly we care about Georgia. We've done when Georgia made huge changes, we've done videos, Jackson sent out emails. We have done significant work. Anytime there's an actual change with Florida, when Florida changed their subjects, we got, you know, we got videos and emails and opportunities for people to, you know, how, how do we recalibrate this? But what we don't want to do is we don't want it to become kind of a, oh, an email came from this state bar. So now we need to like, spend 15 minutes discussing it. Really, the Georgia stuff, there was nothing really new. Exam results are coming at the end of December. I think that's pretty much what we expected. You know, it's it's not as late as California, but it's, I think, late. <laughs> it's late. 
New York is also, you know, and December 2020, yeah. you know, so I think it's just, they're really, and then it's the same, the, the same stuff that we've talked about at the beginning. Um, so hopefully you were here at the beginning of the, the call today where we said, you're going to be getting emails from your jurisdictions about these trial runs with ExamSoft. Everybody, pretty much everybody got an email of some sort yesterday because ExamSoft released the software yesterday. So, you know, it, that is, you just need to go on and do what your board of bar examiners is asking you to do in the timely deadlines. And we're just, for the sake of everything, you know, I don't want to talk more about it, but just we're not going to go through all 50 states plus the U.S. territories and say all right. <laughs> So uh, Let me say this about the trial runs with ExamSoft. This is going to be from a 30,000 foot view. This is going to be the real bellwether. Mm -hmm. If these trial runs go well, then I think there's enough confidence to, to hold the October 5th and 6th exam as planned. If the trial runs have problems, and they have up until this point, no, there has not been a, a, a glitch-free opportunity anywhere in the country. If there are problems with the trial runs, depending on what the problems are and how significant and how widely impacting, then the entire deck could be reshuffled again. And so these trial runs really, really matter. We're going to watch the trial runs, obviously, very carefully. And after you've done the trial run, watch to see what your state says and does about it. As, and certainly, we would love to hear your, your experience with the trial runs in your jurisdiction, because we think this is probably the leading indicator of what is going to happen in October. And it's, it's in some ways the leading indicator of what might happen in 2021. So... I think until those trial runs have hit a majority of applicants, uh, which means going through, you know, some of the big states, we won't really know whether or not ExamSoft can do this. And that, that's just the great unknown. I mean, it really is the great unknown for everybody, I think, yeah. bar examiners, us, applicants, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. So just make sure you, you know, follow those emails. Do, you know, don't wait till the last minute. If there's a required trial run and it has a deadline, just, you know, do it, do it this weekend. Like just take yeah. care of it, get out of the way. And the chat box had a question about how to study for the bar exam when they're working. So, you know, took the summer off because thinking, okay, it's a July exam. I'll take the summer off of work and can do this. But now the exam being in October and the law firm needs uh, her to go back to work. So working full. I that, yeah. I think there's a lot of people that are in that situation. I, I would go back to what I just said, which is pick, figure out where you are in the study guide and where you've got to go to get to the end of the substantive study. Okay. If you've already done all that, if you're just in review, then I would simply say, take the number of hours that you've got available for study and break them up and say, I've got 20 hours a week to, to prepare for the exam now and review, and then just call it bar study. Don't try to assign it to a particular yeah. subject or a topic or, or something else, and then go deep. Find the, the, the topics on the exam with which you are least comfortable. So if you are least comfortable with uh, Florida con law, start with Florida con law, do some go photo read, do the lecture, work on your mind map, then write some essays, right? And stay in that subject for, you know, a day or two or three. You've got that luxury right now. I think people are putting un unnecessary pressure on themselves, thinking that somehow this has got to be a 40 or 50 hour a week study plan. It certainly doesn't. Most of you were ready to take the exam on August 16th. This is all extra. <clears throat> I don't think you need to do it, but okay. yeah. Okay, so you may have thought you were going to be ready in July or had to be ready in July, and now you've got more time. If you have not finished your studies, figure out where you are in assignments and what it, how many assignments remain until the review section. The review should start about 10 days before the exam, and so then divide that up, and that's the number of assignments you need to complete per day, and then figure out how many hours a week that would require for you. But there is no answer that's going to get you away from you've got to study. I mean, you do have to study and you got to balance it out, but it doesn't have to be all or nothing, right? I mean, I think that's the key here. Yeah. And know that most of our students do work full time. I mean, I, I worked while I studied for the bar with Celebration Bar Review as well, because, you know, I moved back to California and we had just bought a house and, you know, it was like, I, I couldn't, we're in the middle of the recession and I could not afford to wait and, and just sort of sit around and do nothing but study. So fantastic if you have all that time, but if you don't, it, it's okay. That's this course is designed for people who have very busy schedules and can't do, you know, full time 
bar study without anything else in their life. So it's okay. Yeah, I mean, be a photo reader, work on your mind maps, use tools like the interactive videos, the multi-state nutshell videos. Those are things that will, will speed up your study, I think, if you're feeling like you're behind. And then I think this is the last question we've got. I'm planning to do the mock exam within the next week. So the, the online like test exam through exam soft, I'm a little apprehensive about how they will use the data. Is it intended to identify us by writing style or am I reading into this too much? You're probably reading into it too much. They have far too many bar tests yeah. right now. They, they, they can barely keep their head, their eyes above water. I don't think there are any, any bar exam is that sophisticated at this point. Literally, they're just trying to figure out how to give the damn thing. Yeah. So, uh, you know, uh, I'm not a big fan of the intrusiveness of the bar examiners. We talked about that with the NCBE survey last week. Yeah. But I think here you're safe. I don't think they're doing anything with it. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't worry. They're not going to be like judging your writing and saying like, oh, look, she's she doesn't know the answer to this question yet. Like it's, yeah, yeah you're okay. It's, you could write you know, Dr. Seuss in the, the text box. It's really just, it just wouldn't be as helpful for you for practicing. So use it to practice, but it's, they don't care what you're saying. I can't imagine they're going to read anything that's been written on those pages. And so I just want to encourage all of you to, to hang in there. It's going to start, you know, becoming clearer as we get closer to the, the test itself, whatever your test date is. For those of you, particularly in Texas, coming up on September 9th, you know, you're right around the corner. We've got, uh, you know, a week from now, you'll be in your test. And so we want to wish you all good luck. I know you've been working hard in, in that jurisdiction and a couple of other September 9th jurisdictions that are giving tests. We've got a few of you in September 30th jurisdictions, and we got a bunch of you in October 5th. And then, of course, we've got Florida in, in October. We're getting there, it, it slowly starting to work through. We will watch for those exam soft trial runs to see how they work. That will tell us a lot. And we'll keep you informed. Thank you, Megan, for being here. Yeah, June just said it's Labor Day weekend this weekend. So hopefully it's people get up. Yeah. <laughs> that could be a hint. That could be a clue. <laughs> so, yeah. So hopefully, you know, take, take at least a little bit of time. I hope everybody takes a little bit of time to do something enjoyable, get outside. And, you know, you can pause the studying for, for a few hours at, at minimum and just make sure that you're keeping up your mental health as well and, and taking care of yourself. So, yeah. Enjoy, guys. Best of luck. All right, everybody. Take care. Have a great week and a great Labor Day. <laughs> and uh, we'll talk to you again next Wednesday. Bye-bye. Bye. Well, that's our recap for the week. I hope it's been helpful to you. There's certainly a lot going on. We want to wish everyone getting ready for the September 9th exams. Uh, good luck on those in-person exams and uh, safe travels and, and be well. And certainly for those of you who are continuing to prepare for the September 30th in-person exams and the online October exams around the country, we want to wish you good studies and a good Labor Day weekend. Hope it's a productive and healthy and safe weekend for everybody. Now, I do want to remind you, we've got a special free training webinar coming up. It's called Now is the Best Time to Take the Bar Exam. We're going to show you a particular strategy that we think is very successful. In fact, we know it's successful during this COVID-19 pandemic. And we're going to do a live Q&A in every session. And all you have to do is go to celebrationbarreview.com slash now, or you can click on the registration button in the show notes, and then we'll see you uh, for that special free training. Well, okay, everybody, have a great week. Uh, have a great weekend and a holiday weekend. And we'll look forward to seeing you next week along the extra mile. Thanks for listening and watching the Extra Mile podcast for bar exam takers at celebrationbarreview.com.